Welcome back to another BD Outdoors Weekly Roundup. If you've fished here in San Diego, you know that when it comes to springtime yellowtail, the Coronado Islands have called your name at some point or another. The Coronado Islands are an island chain approximately 13 miles from San Diego off the coast of Mexico. With its western coast exposed to colder Pacific Ocean currents and tidal swings, the water there is generally filled with volumes of bait fueling the amazing biodiversity that can be found in its local waters. From calico bass, barracuda, rockfish, lingcod, bonita, the list goes on with the opportunity to catch any one of these species. The Coronado Islands are also synonymous with yellowtail, and that's gonna be the focus of this week's video, so let's begin. We see tight balls of yellowtail sometimes hugging the structure, so you wanna drop down something that has a little bit of weight to it to get down there, provoke that reaction bite before you burn it back to the boat, before you repeat that whole process. What we see working majority of the time is gonna be those heavy full-size jigs like Salas 6X. You wanna pair this with a stout rod with a 40 to 60 pound rating and a reel that has a high ratio to once again hit the bottom, provoke that reaction bite, and it's usually just a couple cranks off the bottom, you're gonna get bit. What we've also been seeing working has been the implementation of vertical jigs and flat fall like jigs from 100 to 180 grams depending on the current. Same method as the yo-yo, but you're presenting the fish with another jig appearance before you burn that all the way back to the boat. Everyone has heard of surface irons and can easily be the biggest rush when getting hooked up to a yellowtail. With surface irons, you wanna watch for any surface activity. Aim for your target and retrieve in a way that best shows the movement of that iron. Every surface iron is going to swim differently. Some may do better going against the current on the retrieve. Some might have more erratic movements coming back to the boat. And some might have a kick to a certain side. The only way you're gonna know how your jig swims is casting out and watching what your jig does. Depending on how that jig swims, you might need a slow retrieve, maybe a fast retrieve. That's something you find out once you get out there. It might be windy and you need a heavier surface iron. In that case, my favorite kind of jig to use is a Salus 7X. This jig makes casting out a lot easier for me with that extra weight giving me a little boost through my cast to send it out. Send what you feel most important in. Taddy 45s and JRI Stingers are also common jigs we see working. When it comes to rod choice, that depends on your skill, ability, and overall comfort when you're casting out. Again, what works for me may not work best for you. I like using my 90J, but maybe a 10-foot Seeker Lua might just feel better for you. I like to organize all my surface irons and yo-yo in one bag, and each one of my jigs has been swim tested to know how each one will perform in certain conditions. Everyone is gonna organize them differently, but this is how I like to organize my gear so I can easily sort through the jigs I want to use at the islands. That way, I'm not bringing any unwanted tackle that's gonna take up space or not get used. My surface iron rod is a custom Cal Star 90J with a Trinidad 20. I back about a third of the reel with 65 pound braid and the rest of the reel with straight mono, either 40 or 50 pounds of fresh test. Keep in mind your jigs are gonna swim differently with different line sizes. And if you happen to put a wire leader on there, it's gonna weigh that jig down a little bit more. Sometimes depending on current and tide, yellowtail might be interested in live bait. That's the case, having a good fly line bait set up in your arsenal might be worth sending out. As for rod choice, anywhere from a 20 to 40 or 20 to 50 size rod would be ideal in the eight to nine foot range so you're able to cast out a bait but have enough backbone in the rod to support the strength, the strength of these fish if they make a run for the rocks or if you're trying to fight out those sea lions. The hooks we recommend are a 1.0 to 2.0 size but that's just depending on bait. Another method that's successful with live bait presentation is gonna be a dropper loop setup, which I have also gone over in earlier videos. Island fishing is just around that corner, so hopefully you learned something new or different in this week's video. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.